Okay. 10a has been requested. 15 x squared. Okay. What are we going to do? This actually looks harder than it is. Common factor. Okay, all I'm going to do, I'm going to look at that. Right, I don't care about the test right now. Okay, Reda, go sit down. I just finished saying how important this was. Everybody needs to be watching. Okay, I don't want to see people looking at their phones. Like, this is like. If you're not paying attention to this, I can't help you. Like I'm, I, feel, I can't do anything more to help you, okay? You have to watch this if you don't understand it, okay? This one's relatively easy, actually. If you start, remember the order, I'm always going to check what? Check and see if I can greatest common factor first. Well, it looks like I can take something out of both of those, can I? Okay, so let's take the five what? Five, five takes care of the numbers, but then I also see that there's an X there. So I can take 5x out, right? Then you tell me what's left after you take it out. x minus 7, y. Huh? What do you mean? Oh, so, sorry, yeah. It's because I keep getting interrupted in my process. Nothing crazy there. Not much more you can do there, though. Okay? That's that one. Okay? B. I'll just run through these just because. Now, this one's a nice one. Nicer of the next hardest, anyway. Okay. What do I see here? I see a I see a trinomial. Right? But specifically, is it complex or simple? simple. It's simple. It's simple because I have a one out front. Right? So I'm gonna factor, I'm gonna break this, I'm gonna make it look like factored form. Okay? So all I have to do is find two numbers that multiply to 15 and add to negative eight. What do you think? We'll start at one, 15, nope, uh, three and five. That looks like it might work. What if I made them both negative? That looks like it works, okay. So with a simple trinomial, as soon as you arrive at these two numbers, I go x, minus 3, x minus 5 equals, you could write equals on the other side. Okay, just as a precursor, if I wanted to, like solve, say that this question said solve by factoring, then I could go 0 equals, 0 equals, uh, x minus 3 and 0 equals x minus 5, x equals 3, x equals 5. So there you have your two x-intercepts. Okay? Any questions? If you can make a trinomial into a simple trinomial, you do that by common factoring first. Right? Because that's easy. Any issues? Let's do C. Okay, C, 3x squared plus 24x plus 21. I see it's a trinomial. Simple or complex? 
that's complex as it stands right now because of the three out front, but always common factor first. So what is there in all three of those terms that I can remove? I see a three, three goes into three, three goes into 24, three goes into 21. So let's take it out. Three, x squared plus eight x plus seven. Well, that's nice. Now this is a simple trinomial. So I need two numbers to multiply to seven and add to eight. The two numbers that work, let's just run through them. One times seven. Oh, that was nice, easy. They're both positive, here you go. Three, x plus one times x plus seven. Okay? Any questions? If I wanted to say solve, solve this by factoring, zero equals three times x plus one, x plus 7. I could divide both sides by 3, right? The 0 eats the 3 basically, right? And you're just left with the same question as above. x plus 1, x plus 7. So x equals negative 1, x equals negative 7. If the question said solve by factoring. Yeah, if it doesn't say solve, it just says factor, then you, you stop here. Okay? I'm just trying to kill two birds with one stone here as we go through these questions, right? Because I'm sure you'll see questions that here solve the following quadratic equation. Number 14 says solve. Okay? You're going to do the same thing in, as in 10, except you're actually going to, well, you're going to tell me what these two answers are. Okay? Next one. Is that uh, D? Okay. What is that? Again, factoring is a game of recognition. Yes, Sarah. Okay, close. Kaylee? Difference of squares. Because it's you got two squares that you can square root and they're separated with a difference. Now I'm Sarah's not gonna be the only one to make that kind of disconnect, right? A perfect square trinomial has three terms. They're the ones that look like something like this. X squared plus three x plus nine. Sorry, six x. If you factor that. You can square root the first and square root the last. You take the sign from B. X plus 3 times X plus 3 turns into... Okay. The difference is we've got a difference of... The difference of squares only has two terms. One, two, right? A perfect square trinomial... has three terms, one, two, three. That's the difference, okay? So the principle, like, we're pretty close by saying it's a perfect square trinomial because it's very similar, okay? It's just a little small distinction in the way that it operates, right? Even if you look at the answers, and when we do this answer here, you're gonna see the difference. It's just a very small difference. It's basically a, it's a form of a perfect square, okay? Okay, so I'm going to square root the first and square root the last, okay? Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of m squared is m. Then I'm like, okay, square root of 100 is 10. And n, you can take the sign from this one. But then the reason why it doesn't have any middle terms is because they've canceled. So the other side must be 7m plus 10m. We see the difference between a perfect square and a difference of squares over here. 
you've got opposite signs in a difference of squares relative to the same sign in the perfect square trinomial. That's the subtle difference between the two, okay? Are we okay? Yes? Wouldn't it be 10n? 10n, sorry, yeah. Okay, kind of did two questions there as well. You might see a perfect square somewhere. Sure enough. This is just factoring. Okay. Let's do E. Where are we? E. What are we going to do? I've got 4a squared plus 36a plus 81. My eye is gravitating towards the fact that I can square root the first and square root the last. Right? We can prove whether or not this is actually true. But let's say it's 2a uh, plus 9 squared. Any issues? I think it works, actually. I think we're okay. Do you want me to prove that as a complex trinomial? I'd prefer not to. I'd prefer you guys just to recognize and save yourselves time. If I, when I put a perfect square trinomial on the exam, I'd prefer you to just recognize the fact that you can square root that and you can square root that, and then you just take the sign that's on B and be done, move along. Instead of trying to do this, Two numbers that multiply to, uh, what's 4 times 81? I don't even know. 4 times 81 and add to 36. I'd prefer you not to try and do that. Okay. Just recognize things for what they are. It saves you time. Okay? Any questions? Yes? Yeah. I, when I when I give you a trinomial, I want you to run through the order of things in your head that like is the easiest. So that means avoid doing complex trinomial factoring at all costs, right? But do complex factoring before using the quadratic equation. Always factor before you can before you. Use the quadratic equation if you can, right? In terms of factoring, you don't want to do the complex trinomial. That's the hardest of them all and the most time consuming, right? So just looking back at the question like B or something, wherever we did up here, C, I turned what looked like a complex trinomial into a simple one. I only did that because I was looking for a way to make it easier because I saw that I could take the three out so I common factored that made the question easier right I would say difference of squares is really easy it's fast perfect square trinomials are really fast simple trinomials are relatively quick too right complex take a little bit more thought and take a little bit more time so you don't want to do those if you don't have to, right? You're just going to make your life easier, okay? Are we okay? You don't want to have to do this here. I don't want you doing that. It'll give you the right answer if you do it right. It's too hard. It's like, I don't want to come up with two numbers that multiply to whatever. It's like 300 and something, right? Yeah. Uh, our last, resort only last resort, if I say solve, if I say solve, is the quadratic equation. If I just say factor and it doesn't factor, you write non-factorable and move along. Yes, Paul? Uh, do you guys like memorize all the equations? Or do you have them like written on the chalkboard? By which equations do you mean? Like 
I'll put them on the test. Whatever I think you need, like quadratic equation, I might be nice and put it on there. I might put all three of those on there. Yeah, I'll put cosine law on there and sine law. Was it, su was it such a bad thing? No, I'm just asking, like, wasn't that the reason we were taught the thing? Yes. But under normal circumstances, like in a regular semester, I probably wouldn't give it to you on a test. All right? I know. I'm nice, you guys complain. I'm not nice, you guys complain. I'm somewhere in the middle. You guys complain. There's no winning. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. F. Let's do F. You guys need to see one of these. The last two you guys need to see. Yeah, all of it. Uh, we'll find out in a sec. I don't think so. Uh, in 14, there might be some in 14 that prompt you to factor, but then they don't factor, so then you have to use a quadratic equation. That's possible. If you look at 14, okay, where it says solve. Yeah, go, go. Just write, does not factor, and move along. No, nope. not if it says factor. It'll say solve. It'll say solve. Then I want you to use it. Okay. Okay, am I factoring anything out of here, common factor-wise? No, no chance. So, you're stuck. This is a scenario where you are stuck having to do this. Two numbers that multiply to negative 30, add to negative 1. Let's start running through the numbers. 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 4 doesn't go into 30. Just skip over that one. We can go to five. Five times what is 30? Six. Okay, that's looking not bad. Okay, I'd stop there. Now, your next question is, how do I make this work? It, no, we know it multiplies, so that's good, kind of. But I need it to be multiplied to a negative number, so we know one of them has to be negative. So you have to pick which one. I'm going to make the six negative, right? Because five plus negative six equals negative one so that's good we're good to go now at no you are not allowed to do this and we've said this a few times x plus five i saw this on the test even though i explicitly said do not do that if it is complex you are not allowed to do that complex trinomials require you to break the middle term up and i'll do the question two ways 2x squared uh, minus 6x plus 5x minus 15. Why did I group them that way? 5 goes with 15 nicely. 2 goes with 6. It doesn't matter, but I just like doing it that way. Okay? So, I'm going to factor 2x out. These are all equals, right? What's left after I remove it? X minus 3 plus 5. X minus 3. So my final product here, I'm going to remove the X minus 3, and I get 2X plus 5. Okay? I think the most surprising thing for me teaching this was that nobody, well, I'm not going to say nobody, very small number of you used the table, which I thought was surprising. Yet, the test results did not indicate that you knew what you were doing for the most part, right? Which is what I found surprising. I think the table does a fantastic job. It, you can't mess it up. There's no way you can mess it up. And it's the same thing every single time, right? Like, why can't you guys set up a table like this? Is it more time consuming? Yeah, but you know you're gonna get the right answer. Right? You throw in the stuff, 2x squared. You throw in 50, minus 15 in the bottom right. 
And then you throw in your two factors, 5x and negative 6x. Just start reading stuff off vertically. What's common vertically in the first column? 2x. In the second column, I see a 5 that I can take out. We'll worry about the signs after. Then read horizontally. Horizontally, I see an x that I can take out of the first two. And uh, 3. Here. Now go back and fill in the signs. How do I get positive number in the top left? Just leave them both positive. How do I get a positive number there? Leave them both positive. How do I get a negative number here? Make the 3 negative. Uh, and that takes care of it. That's it. So this has to be plus. Here's your answer. 2x plus 5. x minus 3. Done. I think that's brilliant. I was very surprised I did not see more of that. Right? It, what, you're never going to mess it up. It's, it's, you can't, even, even if you make a sign error, it, all the work's there. It's right there. Right? You make a sign error, you get two and a half, three and a half out of four. As opposed to leaving it like up here somewhere. Or like finding the numbers, you're going to get like two. That, that's different. But if you carry through and you give me something down here, it's still three and a half. That makes no, it, it makes perfect sense to me. If I, if I was doing this, I wish I had been shown this in high school. It would have made my life three times easier. I would have actually known what was going on. Instead of trying to figure out factoring in grade 12, because it still didn't go away. Another one? Let's do another one. And then I'll let you guys do some work. Yeah, and how many of you hated math before you came in my classroom? And now how many of you kind of okay with math now? I'm not going to get everybody. I'm not going to get everybody. <laughs> I'm not going to get to everybody. Okay, let's do another one. Last one, and then I'll let you guys do some work. Okay. Have I taken anything out of there? Nope, no chance. You can take a one out. Sure, it doesn't change anything. So I'm stuck. Two numbers that multiply to 12. Add to 7. Start writing out the numbers. 1, 12. 2, 6. 3, 4. That looks all right. Am I going to write this? Do not write that. I don't care how much you want to write it. You're not writing that. You'll get a big giant Sokotoa across your page like I did on some of these tests here. So it'll be no with 10 O's. I'll admit I was a bit violent with that when I marking it last night. Too aggressive. It's a little big. <laughs> Maybe you won't do it on the exam now. Okay, here we go. We got to split up the middle term. I'll do it both ways again, and then I'll let you guys work for the last 50 minutes, okay? 6t. Split the middle term up. Plus 6t squared plus 3t plus 4t plus 2. Factor out the first, out of the first 3t, you get 2t, two, two I'm struggling here, plus 1, plus 2t plus 2t. Oh, Don't forget your equal signs. 
2t plus 1. Too many t's and plus signs. Okay? There's your answer. Can we stop that, please? I actually genuinely have a light sensitivity. Today. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do a table. Just for everybody else. So you can stop there, right? Let's do a table. So you always write 6t in the top left, 6t squared, sorry, and then the number on the end in the bottom right, which is 2 in this question, 3t and 4t, right? Then factor. What you're doing is common factor at this stage, right? So I'm going to remove in the bottom. I can go, well, horizontally, let's go 3t. And two in the bottom. And then vertically on the blue lines, you could take out a uh, 2t and one. They're all positive. That's an easy question. Make them both positive. Rewrite it over here. 2t plus one. 3t plus two. Done. I don't know. I don't necessarily think that's more work or time consuming. I think it's more sp like spatially friendly on tests. It's condensed. It's right all there. It's none of this drawing arrows all over the place and factoring, common factoring, by grouping. All, there's none of that. Just throw it in the table and be done with it. It's done. I would say if you didn't do well in the factoring test, I would just do it this way. Every single one. The only thing you got to worry about, Max, is when we start messing around with the signs. But you always just do the numbers and like common factor first, and then force the signs to make the inside work. Then you have no issues. It's done. It's a nice method. Surprised nobody else picked it up on it. There's only a handful of you. Okay.